Hello, everybody. It is October the 16th, and it is Sunday evening. Yesterday, Saturday, we went over to my daughter's house, and I did a photo shoot, which I always do every year for them prior to the holidays. And we do family pictures and group shots, candid shots of the kids, and so on. So I came home and I edited all the photos. I made about four DVDs worth of uh, copies of all of the photos and then took them over to the house today to give to the relatives. But I just wanted to use that as an example for the continuing saga of what that person with the Pro 100 was suffering from. In other words, he is not getting prints on paper that match his files. And of course, the only way to see his files is on a computer screen. So there's been, I would suspect, over 40 different replies to this man's question. And uh, there's still no solution. And I'm just pulling the hairs out of my head because I know what's going on. It's just that people are just too um, maybe close-minded to accept the actual facts of the problem. So let me go ahead and begin with the fact that when I load a photograph, an image onto my computer, either with Photoshop, Lightroom, Q image, which are the three applications that I mostly use, I can go ahead and edit. I create a black point, a white point, and then I adjust all the tonalities. Then in Lightroom, which I love to use, I adjust my color, my brightness, my um, contrast, leaving again, making sure that I still maintain those uh, black and white points that I originally set up. And those are locked down. They will not move. And so then I increase my uh, saturation a little bit. I adjust my sharpness. I do all of the little adjustments that most people will do before they commit to printing. I then go to the print module and I make sure that my printer driver, whatever printer I'm using, make sure that that driver has his color management option turned off. Okay. And then I choose my profile for that particular paper that I am going to use for that printer and that particular ink set. I may be using OEM. I may be using third party inks. And so here's what happens. Do I soft proof this image? I could, but I know pretty darn well how it's going to turn out from experience. And I just want to show you. This is San Gabriel from Red River. And you've seen this paper before. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You've heard about it. There are some um, new versions of it. And I don't know how good that version is, but this is the original version. And this is with Precision Colors inks on the Pro 100 using Precision Colors D50 profile, Delta 50 profile. It is a custom made profile for San Gabriel 1.0, their inks in that printer, the Pro 100. It is beautiful. It is just the way I saw it on my monitor. I didn't really have to soft proof. I knew from experience, and I know because my workflow is, is nailed down, okay? Every time I print, it's the same exact workflow. The only difference is, the only thing that comes into play are paper, whatever printer I use, and whether I use OEM or third-party source, okay? And then I match a profile to that. I don't have to soft proof it. I know how it's going to come out. Okay. I really do. I really do. Now, for those of you who are getting something that doesn't match the screen, and it doesn't have to be necessarily luminous um, differences. In other words, your print coming out too dark or too light, even though the color is nailed down, it's still coming out too dark. Well, that's a matter of the original monitor that you used to edit that image with being set too bright. All you have to do is bring it down a little bit, and that way you will not subconsciously darken your image in order to make it look good on your overly bright monitor. What that does effectively is to darken your image. Fine. How do you think it's going to come out 
on print it's going to be dark okay so so let's go from the very very beginning before you start even considering soft proofing you have to have several things nailed down they have to be nailed down first of all you pick one of your printers if you just have one printer that that's that's your only choice let's just say for instance the p800 very popular printer nowadays now can that p800 loaded with the original oem inks can it print on say epson ultra uh, luster photo paper can it print an image on it that appears perfect when you view it so what do you need in order to be able to determine that you need a standard image so that's number one you have to have a standard image the first thing you need to do before you play with anything else is to establish that that printer whatever the printer may be can produce perfect images or perfect prints from what not your images uh, -uh. from a standard image that you download from a myriad of sites and uh, if you want to know what those sites are i'll let you know but still you have to download that particular standard image i should say and then print it using the printer to control color the driver to control color okay and what you will do for example often these images are pro rgb so you will then choose your color space on your driver as pro rgb then you just simply choose your paper and you choose your quality and of course the size you're going to print on and you just send the image from whatever application you're using you do not edit it don't touch it don't look at it don't do anything regardless of what it looks like on your monitor don't do anything to it send it to the printer often you can just send it to the printer using its default settings for a particular type of paper and then you watch it emerge you look at it and it should come out neutral it should come out neutral it should come out with pleasing skin tones the landscape portions of whatever there are some test images that contain a a collage of different types of images uh enhancing certain types of colors and it'll have pictures of uh like maybe four little girls four little kids with different skin tones and you will you know analyze that it'll also have a ramp from pure black all the way to pure white you will analyze that what you're looking for is this you're going to then use your your eyes and your brain you're going to look at that image and you're going to with that printer you're going to say does this look normal to me you're going to view it under bright light conditions okay not just you know a little 60 watt dim bulb next to your monitor no you got to forget about the monitor forget about it look at your print does it look correct are the skin stones normal looking are the colors correct if you have a strawberry does it look bright red like a strawberry you should be able to to you know want to eat it off the paper that's how it should come out and so once you establish by this method that the printer can indeed produce a perfect neutral print not too bright not too dark neutral across the board from black to white you will determine that by looking at your ramp and see if there's any hue changes if it's neutral or linear all the way across then you are good to go that printer can indeed produce perfect prints without any other manipulation okay now of course you have to determine that every nozzle is firing okay you have also pre uh calibrated your uh your printhead in other words not calibrated but aligned your printhead you may want to use unidirectional printing or bidirectional printing either one will work fine and you don't do anything else you just pick the color space that the image is under or tagged with and then you will choose your paper type and it has to be oem for this test okay oem and then you choose your quality and your size and your print and then you look at your let's assume that this is a test image you will look at the test image and you will say wow those skin tones are perfect that black is perfect i see the next step and i see all the way to white and it is neutral there's no change in hue values across the whole scale those strawberries are beautiful the skies look wonderful all of that you will determine that that indeed is a print that you find 
perfect or close to perfect. Okay, that's it. Now you have established that your printer is able to produce prints from a standard image that are as close to perfect as possible. That's the biggest hurdle. Once you establish that, you're set. Now you can go to your monitor. So now what is, that's your next variable. Your monitor out of the box will not be properly calibrated. And don't tell me about, oh, I have XX brand monitor and I have software that I can use to calibrate it. No, you can't because you are asked to rely on your eyes to do that. And your eyes are not a good reliable source or instrument to calibrate fine tonality. You need a hardware calibrator. And the best one that comes to mind, I'm sorry, spider owners, is the X-Rite photo uh, display, I believe. No, X-Rite Color Monkey display. And that's the most uh, affordable one. It is a colorimeter, not a, not a spectrophotometer, but it will still do a, a great job calibrating your monitor. Now, if you want to get later on into developing your own profiles, then you will have to uh, cough up a little bit more money and consider the Color Monkey photo, okay? But that's for later, okay? So now you're gonna calibrate your monitor. And what does that do? That takes care of step two, or the number two requirement. First was make sure that the printer can produce correct prints from a standardized image, okay? Not one that has been manipulated under any condition. So now you go to your monitor. What does your monitor need to do? For, for editing of your images to make any sense whatsoever, you need to know that your monitor is actually displaying in showing you correct values. All an image is, is a bunch of data, okay? A bunch of norm, numbers and jargon. The software from your editing or viewing, photo viewing program, translates that jargon into color values that then the monitor through its little RG and B phosphors can determine or, or interpret what they should be. And you should have the ability to show a blackest point, meaning almost no light em emanating from the screen to the whitest point, which is the whitest white point your, your screen can actually uh, display or, or develop and show you. So then in between there, it should be linear. Okay, now, how do you achieve that? Well, that's done with a, a uh, sensor that you apply to the screen and you run the software with the Color Monkey Photo, for instance, which is the one I have. There is a process that you go through. And once you are done with that process, you uh, will arrive at a point where your monitor should be displaying colors correctly and be linear. Now, the only thing that you have to do manually often is to set your luminance level. I set mine at D, uh, D80, D82M, something like that. And that's because I work in a semi-darkened room. Now others might have to use a higher setting, but the cool thing about the Color Monkey Photo is that you can actually rotate the controller and it opens up a port in the top which actually measures your ambient illumination intensity of your room. And it will set the luminance of the screen depending on the actual editing conditions. So if you edit with the light on all the time and say so you have windows that are blocked, then that's gonna be a constant ambience where you edit from or edit with. And so you have to then use that particular uh, setting when you set up your, uh, your monitor display for a calibration. And it'll ask you to do that. It'll actually measure it and set the proper luminance level for your monitor. And that takes care of that. Now, see, now when you edit your images, it will be worthwhile. It will not be a waste of time because imagine you're editing your images on a screen that's actually too blue and too bright. Well, you're gonna make adjustments even without thinking unconsciously. You're gonna make adjustments. You're gonna look at your images and you're gonna maybe warm them up a little bit. They're a little bit too blue. You're gonna warm them up. You're gonna darken them so that they look right in your screen that's too bright to begin with and too blue. So you see now you're introducing a bias, okay? And that bias will be saved onto your images. You're gonna do file save and then put them away someplace and then later on when you try to print, 
it's going to print with a bias. It's going to print something that's maybe too yellow and too dark because you adjusted them accordingly because your monitor was not calibrated. So once the monitor is calibrated and neutral, then you have a known baseline, a standard. Your monitor now is standard, just like that standard image that you were working with initially to make sure your printer was printing correctly. So you see, now you have two standard conditions that you have met, okay? So now you're ready to edit. And so you go ahead and edit your images. They're beautiful. I did this one and it was gorgeous and I love the way it looked on my screen. And I went ahead to the print module. I loaded up um, Precision Colors uh, profile for this paper and I hit print. Boom, perfect print. I knew that, I knew it was gonna be perfect. Now, what if it had been a little magenta? Oh my God, or if it had been just dull? Well, remember, I know what the printer can do because I printed that standard image. But now my particular image looks different than what I see on the screen. Uh-oh. All right. So now comes the part that's more aligned with color management. And that is the profile that you use. How do you know, okay, if that profile introduce some error to your image. You can't see it, okay? You, you load the profile on the print module, but you can't see what the effect of that profile is until you print it, right? Well, no, you can actually preview that. Now, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. You should be able to also, once you calibrate your monitor, you should be able to print that image you actually got done editing in the same conditions that you printed that calibrated or that standard image that you downloaded, okay? Remember I told you not to edit that image? Well, now you have your own images. You have edited them to your liking. You should be able to print them using the same settings you use for the standard image, okay? Keep that in mind. So again, let's go back. Make sure that everybody gets this. Printer has been verified. It can print a standard image perfectly using all of the recommended settings. Monitor has been calibrated. It is now displaying images that are neutral, linear, and correct color, okay? No biases anywhere. No biases anywhere. Color can be not just a global bias. It can be a nonlinear bias. So you can get all kinds of weird effects and that will go away once you calibrate your monitor. So now my private images that I'm editing, I should be able to print them without having to go through the ICC profile. As long as I'm using OEM inks, okay, I should be able to print that to an Epson P800 using the same settings that I use for the standard image, okay. Before I get any more confusing, and it's, again, once you nail down those three steps, you are good to go, so remember, Calibration of your printer. That means you determine that it can print correctly. Monitor calibration. Okay, now you edit your images. You should be able to print them using the same settings you use for the standard image. But now you want to print a strange paper with other inks in either your own profile or someone else's profile. And now all of a sudden you see differences. Okay, so this is where Finally, we got to the point where we can now soft proof. And soft proof is a functionality that a lot of the higher end image editors provide you with. And again, it's not perfect. It will not show you exactly what the print will look like, but it is a close approximation. And again, the reason I don't use it, because I already know how they're going to come out. I use it every time I test a new profile I have obtained from someone or I have made myself. That's when I test it by using soft proofing. But once I do that, I know what they're gonna come out looking like. No doubt in my mind. As you can see here, I didn't even, didn't even bother soft proofing that. I knew it was gonna come out perfect. So that's the thing. And the process of soft proofing, I'm gonna do in the next video, okay? So I'm gonna actually do that on the computer and I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop. Again, I've done this in the past, but I'm gonna do it a little bit more um, detailed fashion. Then I'm gonna show you what 
you can do to do that also in Lightroom and even Q image. Okay. And Lightroom is actually the best because in there you can do some little tricks that are a little bit more difficult to do on the other two applications. So let me leave you that. I don't want to burn your brains out too much. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow and I will show you how to do that. I know I've, I've said that I was going to do that earlier, but I've been busy this weekend. As you can see, I did about 200 shots of the family and I had to go through all of them one by one and uh, select the ones that were trash and keep the ones that are good. And this was one of the best ones that my adorable little boy looking, looking smart with his little leather jacket and behind one of his uh, many trees in the backyard. And that's it. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too technical or too crazy. I tend to do that. But if you have any questions, of course, ask below. If you have any personal questions that you don't want discussed in the uh, video comment section, go ahead and email me. You know my email, tooljoe1949 at yahoo.com. T-O-O-L-J-O-E 1949 at yahoo.com. And ask away and I will try to do my best to steer you in the right direction and help you out with any problems or any questions you may have. All right, so thanks once again. Please share, subscribe, and like as always. And until the next time, folks, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.